How fast reaction rates go depends upon a variety of things, and as we've seen, temperature is one, surface area is another, concentration is another, and the last is catalysts. Now I'm going to combine this video in, uh, in the respect of talking about catalysts in detail. Um, so looking at activation energy in a little bit more detail, and endo and um, exo uh, reactions. So let's get started. So what is a catalyst? Well, a catalyst is a chemical substance that speeds up a reaction without itself being used up by the reaction. And there's two main types of catalysts. So if we could, I guess if we could say the first one is a biological catalyst. And a biological catalyst, you've probably come across or heard the term enzymes before. So they are protein-based catalysts. And they uh, catalyze a reaction, make it go faster. So every chemical reaction in your body is done by, well, not every, but a lot of them are done by catalysts. And uh, these enzymes that cause the reactions to occur at a faster rate. And they're, they're um, not used up. The other are inorganic catalysts. And it's inorganic catalysts what we're going to be considering here in chemistry. And uh, we touched upon them briefly before, but let's, we're going to look at them in a little bit more detail. Now, a reaction that you're probably familiar with is this reaction here, where we get hydrogen peroxide, and we break that down into oxygen and water. Okay, and so if we were to balance this here, we've got um, two, three oxygens. We've only got two there, um, and we've got two hydrogens. So we'd have to go, okay, well, we can put a half there. That gives us one oxygen, and so together there's two. We could do it like that. And this reaction occurs naturally. So if you get a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, it'll break down naturally in sunlight. However, we can make the reaction faster by putting in a catalyst. And uh, a common catalyst we use is potassium iodide. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we think about the catalyst as having like a, a surface, and that the hydrogen peroxide, and I'll just draw a circle, two circles to represent this rather than the whole molecule. So if we have hydrogen peroxide here like this, okay, and as this molecule comes down, it will bind with the surface of the catalyst. When it binds with the surface of the catalyst, the bond connecting those two is weaker, and therefore it doesn't need as much energy to break it. And so therefore when that comes off the catalyst, then we have a separate products. And so we have two separate products. The catalyst is unused and more reactants can come in. So basically all it's doing is it's just causing the bond connecting the two atoms to be weaker and therefore not need as much energy to overcome um, or to start the reaction. And that's what's happening here. Now I'm just going to show a quick little video here of uh, me doing the uh, this elephant's toothpaste reaction. Uh, have a look. And as you can see, it's pretty fast, and it, and it goes everywhere, okay? So this reaction here is a very popular way of demonstrating this, but it also happens with a lot of other chemical reactions as well. We can use manganese dioxide. That'll also do the same thing as an inorganic catalyst. And another um, catalytic reaction, which, you probably, which you're gonna be researching, is by breaking down larger chain um, hydrocarbons into smaller fractions and it's called cracking. So if we have a look at something that, like um, this here, we've got a larger hydrocarbon chain, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what would that be called? That's right, nonane. So this is nonane, it's, pe it's present in um, petroleum and we can fractionally distill petroleum to get nonane. However, this, you know, can be can be useful as well. We can we can break that down to octane, which is in petrol, or what we're going to be learning more about later on is that we can make shorter um, molecules. Let's say we can make this one here, which is ethene, or its common name is ethylene. We can break this down into ethylene, so that we can use this as a chemical to make other chemicals such as PVC, such as polystyrene, such as um, high density polyethylene like glad wrap, etc. So we make a lot of chemicals from this. But in petroleum there's not much of ethylene. 
So what we do is we break down longer chains to make more of these, which then allows us to make other chemicals. And this process of breaking these longer chains down into ethylene is called um, cracking. And there's two different types of cracking. There's thermal cracking, where we're just using heat. And of course, catalytic. So catalytic cracking is the one that we're going to be looking at uh, because we're talking about catalysts. And so the catalytic crack cracking uses a catalyst called a zeolite catalyst. Zeolite catalyst. And that catalyst is an inorganic catalyst. If you can imagine like honeycomb, where it's got like a, um, a porous structure, then this is a little bit like that, whereas in the pores, these hydrocarbons go into the pores, they bond onto the surface of the uh, zeolite, and therefore causes these bonds here to be broken to make smaller fractions, and eventually to ethylene. So this is the zeolite catalyst. So I want you to uh, look at that a little bit more um, in your... Uh, in your research and see what you find out there, but that's called catalytic cracking. So let's now look a little bit about the energy profile that occurs when we use, sorry, when we use uh, catalysts. All right, rub this off, be back in a sec. Okay, delving into the energy profile diagrams. So if we look at an energy profile diagram, we'll do it over here. And what an energy profile diagram does show us it shows us the enthalpy change or the energy uh, in the reactants and the products. So we'll do enthalpy here, okay, of the reaction. And if we start off here, we have the reactants. And let's say um, it has to go over a certain energy value. So let's write the in. So that's the reactants. I'll just put R for reactants. Then we have P for products. So you can see that the energy value or the enthalpy content of the reactants is higher compared to the en enthalpy of the products, which is lower. So in other words, it's lost energy. So the energy change from here down to here has been lost. And so therefore that's called the delta H. Since it's been lost or it's lower, that delta H and would be negative. It's lost that energy to the surroundings, and therefore it's, a, it's an exothermic reaction. Okay, So with that particular diagram there, that shows you the, the um, energy profile of an exothermic reaction. Now this little bump here, this little bump is the energy required for the reaction to occur. So before the reactants can have their bonds broken, to form the products that they have to have enough kinetic energy to get over this value here. So this value here is the activation energy. Okay, activation energy. And if the reactants do not have enough, re um, enough kinetic energy to get up over this hill, then they'll just fall back down to the reactant. So in other words, there'll be no reaction. So um, imagine that um, a reaction that you've probably done in junior school, which is um, lighting hydrogen. So uh, in junior school, what you would do is you would have a test tube. You would then have some uh, magnesium in hydrochloric acid that will produce hydrogen gas. You'd put your finger over the top probably. You could use also a cork. That just concentrates the hydrogen up here. Then once you've, once you've got enough hydrogen, you'll then expose it to a match. There's my match. And that's going to cause an explosion, a little mini miniature pop. Okay, And that pop test is really just combining hydrogen and oxygen. So you've got hydrogen gas. You're combining it with oxygen gas in the atmosphere to give you water. OK. And so we'll do that there. So that's the reaction that you're doing there. And that reaction is an exothermic reaction, so delta negative H. It produces heat uh, and light and, of course, sound with the sudden expansion of the gas. But it needs some type of um, catalyst to get it started. It needs some type of, well, I should say, it needs some, some type of energy to get it started. And that energy comes from the initial spark that you have there. And so this reaction is um, fun in, in uh, junior high school, and fun in any high school, really. 
but it's also the basis behind fuel cells, right, where we're combining two elements to make water, and that negative, that, that energy that's produced over here is then used to power the car, right? So this basic reaction can be explained by this energy profile. So that is um, an exothermic reaction. Now this activation energy, this minimum energy needed to start a reaction, we can, that diagram I drew before, whereby we had the catalyst and then we had the, um, I guess you could say the reactants bonding onto it. When it bonds onto it, that term there is sometimes called the activation complex. Okay. And that activation complex is right there. Okay, so if that activation complex is enough to make that energy of the bond weak so that it separates, then it continues on to the, re to the product side. If, however, there's the, uh, that does not occur and this comes back off again and still is the, in the reactant form, that means it's gone back to the reactant side. So, you know, in terms of what's happening within the beaker, sometimes that will happen depending upon the energy of the reactants as well. So even with a catalyst, it's got to have a certain amount of energy. So sometimes you see diagrams like this. That's the activation energy. If we put another little dot there like that, it's saying that the energy required is lower with a catalyst present. So that's the activation energy there. But when a catalyst is present, the activation energy is smaller. So that little bit there represents the activation energy needed when there's a catalyst. So it still needs energy to actually go over the hill, but the energy is less, okay? All right, so that is the energy profile diagram for exo. Let's do one for endo. So if I do the endo over here. So the, the uh, reactants would be here. Then it needs a certain amount of energy, goes up. And this time, the products are higher than the reactants. In other words, energy is needed from the surroundings to go into the system and lift the whole energy content of the system up. And so here, you would say that delta H, or right, well actually, um, I will do that, do that differently because because there. Delta H is there, okay? Delta H is the energy of the reactants and energy of the product, so delta H is that there. We have the activation energy is all that way, right? So that's the activation energy there. And if we happen to have a catalyst present, then we can make that smaller. Okay, so this would be the activation energy if a catalyst was present, just that bit there, okay? Um, and going down, of course, to the bottom there. So it's a small amount, okay? So that is an endothermic reaction. So there you go, all the stuff that you need.